Imagine it raining, not just for a day or a week, but for two million years. Today we are going to look at how a gigantic volcanic eruption changed the Earth's climate forever and how this rain caused the largest land animals of all time to evolve. It's going to be just as wet. How spectacular. So make sure to stick around until the end. Welcome everyone. When it rains at my home in Cologne again, I don't even know what annoys me more. That I have to get my laundry off the line or that I've of course forgotten the umbrella in the apartment again. But hey, at least it doesn't rain for 2 million years straight where we live. That's exactly what happened on Earth about 230 million years ago. And this continuous rain changed our planet forever. 230 million years ago, the Earth looked completely different. Instead of the continents we know today, there was only one giant supercontinent called Pangaea. And it was a pretty uncomfortable place because Pangaea was so gigantic, barely any moisture reached the center of the continent. The rain clouds from the ocean didn't make it to the middle of this massive landmass. The result was a gigantic desert. Doesn't exactly sound like the perfect place for the development of the largest land animals of all time, does it? But then something happened that science refers to as the Carnian Pluvial Event. You can also use it perfectly as an excuse. I can't come today. In my bathroom, there was a Carnian Pluvial Event. Sos eos pluvial comes from the Latin word for rain, and Carnian refers to the geological epoch in which it took place. The Carnian. And this event was to change the Earth forever. The trigger for the two million year monsoon was a gigantic volcanic eruption. But by volcanic eruption, I don't mean something like Vesuvius or Etna, that's peanuts. No, this was on a completely different scale. If we want to understand what happened back then, we have to look at what is going on below the Earth's surface. Although the Earth is our home, we know surprisingly little about the interior of the planet. Of course, we know the rough layers, the Earth's crust, mantle, outer and inner cores, but the deepest drilling that humans have ever done was the cola drilling in the Soviet Union. And that only reached a depth of about 12 kilometers. That may sound like an impressive achievement, and it was. Until you realize that the Earth's core is 6,370 kilometer deep. So we've basically just scratched the surface. But even without being able to drill deep, we know that it's pretty hot inside the Earth. In the outer core, temperatures exceed 4,000 degrees. From time to time, the heat rises in the form of hot magma and makes its way through the Earth's crust. We know this as volcanism. Normally, this happens at the boundaries of tectonic plates, where the crust is particularly thin. A large part of today's volcanoes, for example, is located in what's called the Pacific Ring of Fire. But sometimes magma also rises in completely unexpected places, like in the Eiffel. This is what's called intraplate volcanism. Scientists suspect that this happens due to so-called mantle plumes. Gigantic mushroom-shaped bulges of particularly hot material that rise from the Earth's core and move through the mantle. When such a plume reaches the Earth's crust, a very special type of volcanic eruption can occur. Flood basalts. And it was precisely such a flood basalt eruption that triggered the two million year monsoon. In the region that is now Alaska and Canada, the Earth broke open and incredible amounts of magma poured out onto the surface. This didn't happen in the form of a single eruption, but over a period of many thousands of years. The traces of this megavolcanism can still be seen today. They form the so-called Rangelia Formation. To give you an idea of the magnitude, a supervolcano like Yellowstone would have been a children's birthday party by comparison. The Wangelia flood basalts were 100 times larger. Such massive volcanic eruptions have often caused dramatic changes in the history of our planet. The Siberian trap basalts, for example, were responsible for the largest mass extinction in history, known as the Permian-Triassic extinction. 95% of all species on Earth were wiped out back then. So what happened during the Wangelia eruption? Why didn't it lead to such a devastating mass extinction? The answer is fascinating. This eruption was just the right size not to be too destructive. It was, so to speak, the Goldilocks volcanic eruption. Not too big and not too small, but just right. Perfection. Gigantic amounts of greenhouse gases were blasted into the atmosphere. 2001. The CO2 concentration in the atmosphere rose to two and a half times the current amount. But that was not all. As the hot magma made its way to the surface, it encountered something that caused an additional release of greenhouse gases. Huge coal deposits. Imagine that. Magma at 1600 degrees Celsius meets untouched coal seams. That's about as destructive as a Coke Mentos explosion. The burning coal deposits released additional CO. And when you fire up the grill next time, you're basically burning the remains of plants from the time of the Arnian pluvial event. The lush vegetation that developed back then, due to the constant rain, later turned into coal. So the circle closes. 
The massive release of greenhouse gases led to a rise in global temperatures by 3 to 4 degrees. And this rise in temperature had dramatic effects on the Earth's water cycle. The warmer it is, the more water evaporates. And the more water evaporates, the more clouds form. The clouds could now push much further inland into Pangaea before they rained down. The center of the supercontinent, which was previously a hostile desert, transformed into a tropical paradise. But this rain wasn't just regular rain. The volcanic eruptions also released large amounts of sulfur dioxide. When this gas combines with water, it forms sulfuric acid. So what fell from the sky was acid rain. The consequences were dramatic. Acid rain dug into the ground, dissolving rock and forming huge cave systems. Many of these caves still exist today. The massive rainfall caused severe flooding. The water transported vast amounts of sediments into the oceans. And marine ecosystems were severely affected. About 30% of marine species became extinct. That may sound dramatic, but for such a massive climate event, it is actually quite a small number. During the Permian-Triassic extinction, over 90% of all marine species disappeared. Why didn't this massive event lead to such devastating mass extinctions? The answer is actually quite simple. For every species, went extinct, a new one emerged. The Carnian pluvial event was less of a catastrophe and more of a gigantic upheaval. The cards of life were completely reshuffled, and the big winners of this upheaval were the dinosaurs. Before the big rain, the dinosaurs were more of a side note. In the dry areas, other reptiles and the ancestors of mammals dominated. But the dinosaurs had won the genetic lottery, so to speak. They were perfectly adapted to warm, humid habitats. One of the oldest known dinosaurs, Herrerasaurus, lived in a region that is now part of South America even before the Carnian pluvial event. This region was already warm and humid back then. When the climate spread across all of Pangaea, the dinosaurs were able to expand into completely new areas. It's a bit like if Mars suddenly became habitable due to a natural event, and we could just grab it. And the dinosaurs were very successful at that. In the Dolomites, scientists have found footprints from the time before, during and after the Carnian pluvial event. No dinosaur tracks before the rain. During and after the rain, 90% of all footprints are from dinosaurs. It was a veritable takeover. Similar finds have been made in other parts of the world, for example in Argentina. So the two million years of rain not only changed the Earth's landscape, but also life on it. But what happened then? At some point, the volcanic eruption came to a halt. The emission of greenhouse gases decreased. The lush vegetation that had developed during the continuous rain consumed large amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere. Some of these plants later became coal. The carbon we humans burn today is increasing the CO levels again. So the carbon cycle just keeps going. The beautiful Carnian. Pluvial event shows us how closely everything on Earth is interconnected. A volcanic eruption releases greenhouse gases, which change the climate. The climate changes the vegetation, and the vegetation in turn influences the climate. Everything is connected to everything. And sometimes, just a single event is enough to steer the history of life in completely new directions and make it rain for two million years. And speaking of continuous rain, how did the water actually get onto the Earth? The study of asteroids helps us here, and NASA has brought a sample from the asteroid Bennu to Earth and has now opened it, and what the scientists found inside it really knocked their socks off. The original footage and what they found is in the new video. Make sure to click up in the top right, it's turned out really exciting. And for galactic Christmas gifts like plush planets and books signed by me, click down in the bottom left to get to my space shop. Every purchase really supports my work a lot, and they are truly the perfect nerdy Christmas gifts. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.